Gwe Akpijlazi. Hello and welcome to the 2022 Baseball Canada Men's National Championship game. As we've got the two teams that have worked their way into the finals. It is the Dartmouth Mooseheads and the Windsor Stars. We've played a grand total of, what is it, 12, 14, 16. This is the 18th game at this tournament. This is the 12th game on this field. And this will determine who is the champion for Baseball Canada in the, at the men's division for 2022. Two teams that got to this game in very different ways. The Windsor Stars went through the round robin with a perfect 3-0 record. They won most of their games comfortably. Only one of their games was even really close, and that was against these Dartmouth Stars. They then went on and got the bye to the semifinal, won their semifinal with a 10-run rule, and are now playing for the championship. For Dartmouth, they started off 0-2. They had to win three in a row where their tournament lives were on the line. They did that, three straight victories to get here. So these two teams combined are on seven, on a seven game win streaks. Wins are four in a row, Dartmouth three in a row. One of them will extend that streak by one more game and be able to say that they are national champions. Let's take a look at the starting lineups first for the team who will be considered the visitors in this game. That is Dartmouth. Cody Schreider will lead off and pitch. Second will be the shortstop, Chris Thibodeau. Batting third, the first baseman, Ty Doucette. Batting fourth, second baseman, Anthony McKinnon. Batting fifth and playing center, Colby Turtle. Batting sixth, playing third base, Jalen Trider. Batting seventh is the right fielder, Jack Fader. Dan Como will bat eighth and catch. And Billy Hartley, batting ninth, is the right fielder. And here comes Cody Schreider, the first batter of the championship game. And the first pitch comes in just a little bit outside. As we take a look at the stats for Schreider on the tournament, he is Four for 15, that's a 267 batting average. He's got four runs scored. He's also reached on errors twice, a 600 OPS for Schreider so far in this tournament. And takes that pitch. Every single pitch drawing huge reactions from a very enthusiastic crowd as it is now 3-0 on the Dartmouth pitcher who will get into his stats on the mound when we get to the bottom of the first. That one misses high and inside, ball four, and the leadoff batter for Dartmouth ends up walking. That'll bring up Chris Thibodeau, the shortstop. Thibodeau on the tournament is six for 16, two or three doubles, a home run, seven RBIs, four runs scored, a 750 slugging percentage, an OPS of 1.162 for Thibodeau. We'll set the defense for Windsor in the outfield from left to right. It's Steven Adam, Jeremy Orton, and Noah Renault. Around the infield, third base will be Mitch Hunt Wagner, or Hunt Wanger, excuse me. Andrew Wasiluk will man short. Second base is Anthony Dufour, while Colin Robinson is at first. Out visiting his pitcher right now is the catcher, Matt Deneau, and the pitcher for Windsor. A bit of a surprise move in some respects. Has yet to appear in this tournament. The start that he gets is the championship game on the mound, Kimani Bailey getting the start for Windsor. That pitch misses outside and five straight out of the zone to start things off for Bailey. Or for Kim, uh, Kimani Bailey, yes. That pitch in for a strike and now the count one and one, or sorry, two and one, as it was six straight balls. 
Now, I believe his name is Bailey Kimon, or Kimani Bailey. Bailey is the surname, I believe. If that is incorrect, if someone who's watching and knows how to get in touch with me through Twitter or Facebook could please let me know. We will be putting those addresses up later. But I believe it is Kimani Bailey on the uh, Game Changer website where they're doing the live scoring. They have it as Bailey Kimani. Two and two the count here on Thibodeau now. Schreider at first. Quick throw over. Good move there from the Windsor right-handed pitcher. And here comes the 2-2 pitch. Swung on and foul tip right into the glove of Deneau for the first out of the inning. And the first strikeout for Bailey. That'll bring up Ty Doucette. Doucette on the tournament. Right now is six for 15 with a home run, two runs scored, four RBI. He's also walked twice, struck out three times. His OPS 1.071. Swing and a miss at the first pitch that he sees from Bailey and the count one at 0 and 1. Swing and a miss again by Doucette as he's over top of that one and the count goes to 0-2. These teams did meet in pool play. They were in the same pool. The Windsor Stars won that game by a score of 5-3. It was the closest game that Windsor had at any point in this tournament leading up to tonight. That one just misses outside and the count goes one and two. Anthony McKinnon, the second baseman in the on deck circle for Dartmouth. The one two pitch from Bailey. Sliced foul. Well out of play down the left field side and the count remains one and two. A beautiful Sunday evening here in Sydney. We've had great weather all the way through this tournament. We had about 10 minutes, not even five minutes of a bit of rain that came early in one game. No need for any delay or anything. In fact, the only delay that we've had in this tournament was during the second quarter final last night. It was delayed for its start by about 35 minutes because the quarter final before it went 11 innings. Other than that, everything has been running right on time all weekend long. And Mother Nature certainly doing her part to help ensure that that happened. As Bailey throws over to Robinson, Robinson had to be sharp to keep that ball from going all the way over to the wall. As the throw was a little bit wide of the target. That one driven right back up the middle for a single. That'll put two runners on. And bring up Anthony McKinnon. or McKinley, excuse me. Anthony McKinley on the tournament. 333 batting average, five for 14, or five for 15, including a home run, three RBIs, two runs scored. He's been hit by a pitch once, walked once and struck out four times. And I finally, took until the final for me to finally find where all of the tournament game by game and updated stats are. Wouldn't you know, it would take until the final for me to find it all. McKinley takes a strike and the count 0 and 1. Bailey looks back at second. 
Gets himself set, now delivers. And that one missed just a hair low, it looked like. And the count goes to one and one. The previous meeting between these two teams, they actually played uh, on, which game was it? It was yesterday, was it yesterday morning's game? No, it was Friday morning's game that Windsor defeated Dartmouth by a score of 5-3. to three. Dartmouth actually had the game-tying run at first base when the game came to an end in the seventh inning. They had two runners on, trailing 5-3. to three. That one sent high into the air into right field. Coming over, making the catch is Renault. False start by Schreider to draw a throw from Renault to see if maybe it would go off target, but it was right on. And so that'll be the second out of the inning. And that will bring up Colby Turtle, or Turple, excuse me. Colby Turple. Just one for 14 on the tournament. He's had a bit of a rough go of it, but he does have an RBI and one walk. Turple in there for his defense, though. He's very, very good. Covers a lot of ground out there in the outfield. Takes that one high, ball one. Turple is a better batter than the 071 in this tournament would indicate as well. Just had his struggles with his bat this weekend. That one misses outside and the count 2-0. Oh. Turple's been able to reach getting hit by a pitch once. He reached by walk once. So has been able to find his way on base at least a couple of times. Pitch from Bailey, in for a called strike and the count goes to two and one. Kamani Bailey actually on the roster for Grambling State's baseball team. As I look him up there, swing and a miss for Turple and the count goes to two and two. He was a redshirt sophomore in the 2021 20, season, so that would make him going into his senior year at Grambling, I do believe, if I'm calculating this right. That one misses inside, and the count runs full. So three and two with two away. That means Schreider and Doucette will both get a head start moving on whatever happens on this play. And the payoff pitch from Bailey. Misses high, ball four, and that will load the bases and bring up Jalen Trider. Trider also has been struggling at the plate this weekend, one for 15. He's also been hit by a pitch once, so he's gotten on base twice. He's reached once by way of a fielder's choice as well. And we should acknowledge the Susan McEachern Memorial Ball Field where this game is being played within the community of Sydney, the Cape Breton Regional Municipality, all lying within the unceded ancestral territory of Mi'kma'ki, the island of Cape Breton known in Mi'kmaq culture as Unamagi. Go, 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 
One and oh the count on Trider. Bases loaded. Two away. That one misses outside and picked out by Deneau. Good trap there by Beno off of or Deno, excuse me, off of the uh, ball down in the in the dirt. All into the artificial surface here. The beautiful artificial surface. We'll talk more about that a little later on this morning or this evening. It's been a long weekend, folks. <laughs> Count goes to two and one. For Dartmouth, in their losses, the first two games that they played, missed opportunities really were the story of those losses, especially the game that they fell to the uh, Elmwood Giants. There's a grounder down to the shortstop, Wazaluk. Over to do four for the third out of the inning. So no runs on one hit, no errors, and the bases left loaded after a couple of walks as well. And so we've played half an inning. Dartmouth not able to take advantage of those bases loaded. And Windsor coming up for their first at bats. Taking a look at the Windsor batting order, the right fielder will be Noah Renault. He'll bat first. Batting second, the DH, Jake Lumley. Batting third is the shortstop, shortstop Andrew Wasseluck. In the cleanup spot is the first baseman, Colin Robinson. Batting fifth, playing third base, Mitch Hudvanger. Batting sixth and catching, Matt Deneau. Seventh in the batting order and playing left field is Steven Adam. Batting eighth, playing second base, Anthony Dufour. And batting ninth is the center fielder, Jeremy Orton. And again, with them as starters for Windsor is the pitcher, Kamani Bailey. Taking a look at the defense for Dartmouth. The outfield from left to right is Billy Hartley, Colby Turple, and Jack Fader. On the left side of the infield is third baseman, Jalen Trider, and shortstop, Chris Thibodeau. Second base, Anthony McKinley, first base, as it has been all weekend monitored by Ty Doucette. Dan Como behind the plate and making his second appearance on the mound, Cody Schreider. He pitched the very first game of the tournament here at Susan McEachern Memorial Ball Field. A six and two thirds inning complete game. Six and two thirds innings was the complete game because with two outs in the bottom of the seventh, Schreider ended up giving up just his second hit of the game, but it was a solo home run. So Schreider's win-loss record 0-1 on the mound. And giving you a more complete line, he went, uh, he pitched six and two-thirds innings, gave up two hits, just one run, it was earned. He walked only one batter and struck out six. So that gives him an ERA of 1.35 and a whip less than 0 0.5 at 0 0.40. The first battery faces is Noah Renault and Renault on the weekend so far, four for 14 with two doubles, three RBIs, four runs scored. He's also walked three times. Fouls that one back into the screen. And so the count one and one on the right fielder for the Windsor Stars. That one just misses and the count goes two and one. So Schreider pitching on two days of rest after throwing that game back on Thursday. Another one fouled well back, and the count goes two and two. Schreider, the right-hander, delivers. And the curve ball right on the inside corner. Catches Renault looking for the first out. 
That's Strider's seventh strikeout of the weekend. That'll bring up Jake Lumley. Lumley on the weekend, four for 13 with a double, three RBIs, four runs scored. He reached after getting hit by pitches twice and walked twice as well. So the on-base percentage, 471, and his OPS, 855. Takes the first pitch, just a smidge outside, ball one. Or no, it was on the outside corner, excuse me, 0-1. That curveball misses on the outside, and the count now is one and one. As the sun dipping away, and so the light from the overhead lights here giving us the beautiful view of the ballpark. Another pitch misses outside, and it's two and one. Swung on and missed there, and it's two and two. Left-handed hitting DH steps in. Oh. There we go. Another one fouled back, and the count remains two and two. Ryder ready and delivers. Swung on and missed. Back to back K's for Schrider. That'll bring up Andrew Wasiluk. Wasiluk, eight for 17 with a double, five RBIs, two runs scored. So a batting average of 471. Believe it or not, that doesn't even lead the team right now. But the batting average of 471 for Wasiluk, the shortstop. Takes the first pitch curveball in for a strike. And the count 0-1. I think we might see this game move along at a very quick pace as both of these pitchers seem to be dialed in. That one fouled back. The count's going to go 0-2. Bailey did give up a couple of walks there in the top of the first, but... I think that may have been nerves, the fact that he had been waiting all weekend for this pitching appearance. He knew that Windsor had their pitchers mapped out for the whole weekend before they even got here. Grounder right back to Schreider. Schreider will flip it over to Doucette. And a quick one, two, three inning. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left on base. We've played one complete. And we will head to the top of the second. If goose eggs on the board between Dartmouth and Windsor. And we should take a moment to once again acknowledge this beautiful ball field, Susan McEachern Memorial Ball Field. It's 320 down each of the or 325 down each of the lines, 340 into the alley, and 355 to straightaway center. And as we're about to show you, it also has a pretty cool feature to it. You see the picture at the bottom there, that's right behind second base here on the artificial turf on the infield is uh, the, uh, the flower there. And more of those same flowers are up uh, the daffodils on the scoreboard, the home of the Sydney Sooners. And the daffodil is the uh, official emblem of the uh, uh, Canadian Cancer Society. And so uh, this is uh, a way of honoring Susan McEachern, who is the wife, or was the wife of the coach and manager and, and all around main guy for the Sydney Sooners, Jim Rico McEachern, who was the guy who also organized this whole event as the head of the organizing committee for nationals this year. And so honoring Susan with the daffodil uh, in behind second base and then the daffodils as well over on the scoreboard. As we get ready for the top of the second inning, it's going to be Jack Fader, Dan Como, and Billy Hartley, the 7-8-9 hitters, due up. 
as right there is Sean Ferguson. He's the, in the red sweater. That's Sean. He's one of the main guys who was part of the organizing committee as well. In fact, he was my primary contact. I know Sean's not looking at the camera right now, but we see you, Sean. And we appreciate all the work that you did helping to get us here. There's a strike to Fader. Fader on the weekend so far is 0 for 14, still looking for his first hit. He did reach base by a walk once, but Fader has been playing a great uh, outfield this weekend. Most of the weekend in left, playing today in right field as Billy Hartley has come in to take over left field. The guy who's been playing right field in most of the other games uh, is actually Colby Turple. But Turple playing center field, and the guy who has played center field, which is Co uh, in a few of the games at least, which is Cody Schreider, of course, he is on the mound for Dartmouth today. So a lot of player movement to get Schreider back on the mound for this championship game. Pitch misses low there. The count goes to two and two. As Fader stands in. Kamani Bailey with the pitch and a foul tip right back into the glove of Deneau. So that'll be the second strikeout for Bailey. Uh, and it will bring up Dan Como. Como, five for 13 on the weekend with a double, two runs scored. He's also reached once on a walk and is second on the team in batting average at 471, or at 429, excuse me. And takes the first pitch strike. Como, the catcher, standing in, reaches out, gets a piece of that ball, sends it way up high into the night sky, and it ends up coming down just behind the bleachers' first base side. So the count now 0-2. Dartmouth Mooseheads, Windsor Stars playing for the national title for Baseball Canada. That one misses high, one and two. Bailey steps and delivers. This is just a bit low, two and two the count. <laughs> Reaching and pulling the ball foul there is Como. as well as it remains two and two. Como continuing the battle here, or sorry, goes to three and two, my apologies. I looked down for a second, I thought I heard contact and then saw the ball scoot back to the backstop. Payoff pitch, curveball catches the corner. And that's a third strikeout for Bailey. Second straight strikeout here to start the second inning. That'll bring up Br Billy Hartley. Just his second plate appearance in the tournament. He's 0 for 1, but he did score a run coming into another game as a pinch runner. Billy Hartley, a two-sport athlete. Spent time with the Yarmouth Mariners in the Maritime Hockey League. Yeah, 
Also had a cup of coffee with the Screaming Eagles. Well, played half a season with the Screaming Eagles in 2012-13, as they were known then, the, the Cape Breton Screaming Eagles, now just known as the Cape Breton Eagles. Forty-six games in Major Junior overall. Played nearly 170 games of Junior A hockey with the Armith. As that one bounces into the dirt. And Deneau trying to make the block there as the count stays one and two, or goes to one and two, excuse me. One-two pitch, just misses high, and the count two and two. Bailey Kamani, as mentioned, from plays college ball down at Grambling State. That pitch misses inside, and the count runs full. He's gone deep in the count on a lot of batters here. But he is continuing to challenge these batters and gets a grounder there to do four. Do four up with it, throw over to Robinson in time for the third out. So a pair of strikeouts and then a ground out. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of the second with the score still 0-0. Do up in the bottom of the second for the Windsor Stars. It'll be Colin Robinson, Mitch Hudvanger, and Matt Deneau. And we should once again mention that for, uh, for Dartmouth, their tournament started here on Thursday afternoon at 4.30. They took on the Elmwood Giants lost that game by a score of 1-0. As we mentioned, that was the game that Cody Schreider pitched through six and two-thirds innings of two-hit ball, but one of those hits was the walk-off home run, the only game that ended in a walk-off through the whole tournament to this point. As we had some wild finishes in some games, but only one walk-off through the first 17 games. Are we going to see a walk-off tonight? We'll have to wait and find out. But continuing on, Dartmouth started 0-1, losing 1-0 to Elmwood. Then the meeting that they had with Windsor, that was a 5-3 loss. That meant they were 0-2 going into the last round robin game. They needed a win to stay alive. They got that victory 5-1 over the Edmonton Cubs. That was enough to get them into a quarterfinal. They beat the St. John's Capitals 3-0 in that quarterfinal. That got them to this morning, or this afternoon, where they defeated the Charlottetown Islanders 5-0 in a semifinal to get to this game. Colin Robinson leading off. He's four for 13 with a home run, four RBIs, four runs scored. He's reached twice by a walk, once by getting hit by a pitch. It has been a wild weekend for Robinson. 0-1 oh, right now, the count. That one misses, and it's 1-1. One one. Talking about the Windsor Stars and how they got here, they went perfect through the round robin. They started off with a 7-3 victory over the Edmonton Cubs. Then that 5-3 game against Dartmouth where Dartmouth had the tying run on first base. Deep and the hole at short and the throw ends up just pulling Doucette off of the bag as Thibodeau had a long throw to get that ball over and it does end up pulling Doucette off of the bag. We'll have, wait and see how they score that. That'll bring up Mitch Hudvanger. Hudvanger on the tournament to this point. Two for 16, so a 125 batting average. One of those two hits is a double. He does have three RBIs and three runs scored. 
And the first pitch to Hudvanger is called a, or is a swinging strike. And the official score on that play by Robinson, it's ruled a single as the throw. It was a prayer at best from Thibodeau. He was deep in the hole at short. And Robinson able to hustle it out for a infield single. One and one now the count. Make that one and two as Hudvanger looks at a second strike. So we were telling you about Windsor, how they got here, the 7-3 victory over the Edmonton Cubs, then the 5-3 win over Dartmouth, that close, hard-fought game. They then beat Elmwood twice in a row, once in right in uh, pool play. There's a nice play by Schreider to get off the mound and then get the ball over to the second baseman, McKinley, for a force out. So Hudvanger re reaches on a fielder's choice. That retires Robinson for the first out of the inning and brings up Matt Deneau. Deneau, five for 13 on the weekend. So that's a 385 batting average, two home runs and a double. Seven RBIs, four runs scored. However, he has also struck out six times. In fact, leading the team in both home runs, or in all of home runs, RBIs, and strikeouts. And he takes a strike there, 0 and 1. So as I was saying, the Windsor Stars finished off their pool play with a 9-2 victory over the Elmwood Giants. They had a, they finished 3-0, so they had a bye in the quarterfinals, did not have to play a quarterfinal game. Ended up seeing Elmwood again in the semifinals this morning. Won that game 11-1 in six innings to get them here into this championship Sunday night in Sydney. Schreider looks Hudvanger back to first base. With the count 0-1 on the Windsor catcher. That one launched, but pulled well foul all the way, well out of play. So a long, loud strike by Deneau, and the count goes to 0-2. Just a little bit ahead of that one. As he pulled that breaking pitch, well foul. Here comes the 0-2. No, it's gonna be a throw over to first and just getting in under the tag is Hudvanger, or Hudvagner, excuse me. Hudvagner, I apologize. Hudvagner going, or Wagner going, and the throw down to second, bobbled by McKinley. And so, the strikeout of Deneau, but the steal, I don't know, they may call that an arrow, error, excuse me, or we'll see. No, they are giving him credit for a stolen base there. So that'll bring up left fielder Steven Adam. Three for nine, so a 333 batting average. Three runs scored, he's also walked four times, so his on base percentage Lee, er, second on the team at 538. Three for nine plus four walks and three runs scored. And the first pitch to Steven is a strike. 
Hunt Wagner at second base with two away. Swing and a miss there. And the count goes to 0-2. Schreider with three strikeouts on the game. Nine now for the tournament. And ahead 0-2. Make that 0-3 and, and strikeout number four in two innings. Strikeout number 10 on the weekend for Schreider. No runs on one hit, no errors, and one runner left on base. We've played two complete. We'll go to the third with still no score between Dartmouth and Windsor. And at this time, we'd like to once again remind you that we do want to try and make the broadcast a bit interactive here as you watch on Petter Sports and, and Streaming Services through AOTV. So send me a tweet at Petter PC underscore sports. That's P-E-T-T-E-R PC underscore sports. Or send me a message through Facebook, facebook.com slash Petter Sports. Let me know where you're watching from, who you're cheering for, whatever the case may be. We'd love to hear from you. Helps us to know what's going on. And uh, we very much do appreciate all of the comments, questions, whatever it is. As Sarah Wasilek mentioning, we've got a whole crew in Windsor cheering on Andrew Wasilek and uh, sending out a picture. And uh, great looking crowd there watching the game. And so thank you all for tuning in. Joining us for this national championship game. As we get ready for the top of the third, it'll be the top of the order. Cody Schreider, Chris Thibodeau, and Ty Doucette. Schreider walked to lead off the game back in the first inning. First pitch from Bailey misses inside, ball one. Grounder down the third baseline, foul. And the count goes to one and one. One ball, one strike. And the delivery. And that one in, one and two. As the two pitchers in this national championship game squaring off head to head here with Schreider at the plate. Schreider swings and misses. And that'll be the fourth strikeout for Bailey. And the first out of the top of the third inning. That brings up Chris Thibodeau. He was one of those four strikeout victims so far. So 0 for 1 on the night. Left-handed hitting to or the right-handed hitting Thibodeau steps in. First pitch catches the outside corner, 0-1. Bailey delivers. Another called strike, and it's 0-2. Bailey had a little bit of trouble finding the strike zone. In the first inning, walking two. In the second inning, he got to three balls on all three batters he faced, but got them all out. But now he has found the zone. That one misses outside. Thought he might get Thibodeau to chase a bad one. And the count one and two. 
Not going to get a disciplined hitter like Thibodeau to chase a pitch that far out, though. Thibodeau has yet to strike out this weekend. In 17 plate appearances, he's got six hits and a walk. Here comes the one-two, and that one misses down in the dirt, and the count now two and two. almost straight over the top. Gets fouled off by Thibodeau and the count remains two and two. Ty Doucette, the first baseman, waits on deck. Comes the 2 2 from Bailey. Misses inside, ball three, three and two. So Thibodeau, who was down in the count 0 oh, 2, able to work it back to a full count and now pulls that one foul. So he'll get at now a look at an eighth pitch in this at bat. He also saw five pitches in his first at bat against Bailey. So now this is the 13th pitch that he will have seen from Kimani Bailey this evening. And you got to figure that at some point, this high number of pitches that a batter has seen will work towards his favor. Although this time he grounds it to Wasaluk. Wasaluk with the one hop throw, not in time. As Thibodeau was hustling down the line there, even if the throw had been picked up cleanly, there's no way that that throw was gonna be in time. And Thibodeau with the infield single, that brings up Ty Doucette. He singled his first time up, so he's one for one. As Bailey takes a couple of looks over at Thibodeau. Thibodeau not a real, not a real huge lead over at first. And first pitch swinging, Doucette will get that to drop in in front of Renault, heading all the way over to third and not getting there in time was Thibodeau as a big throw gets Thibodeau at third and then they nearly caught Doucette off of first and he has to go diving back into the bag. So a single by Doucette. Thibodeau is gunned down at third, 9-5 on the putout. And so now it's a runner at first with two out instead of runners on the corners with one out as it would have been, but, a, but for a great throw by Renault. And that'll bring up Anthony McKinley. He flew out to Renault his first time up. But what a play by Noah Renault firing that one on a laser beam to Hud Wagner and Hud Wagner able to apply the tag and get the second out of the inning. Swing and a miss there from McKinley. And the count goes 0-1. That one deep into center field, making his way over and making the catch is Orton for the third out. So no runs on two hits, no errors, and one runner left on base, thanks in part to the great throw from Noah Renault to Hud Wagner to get that out at third base. We'll head to the bottom of the third, still looking for the first run of this ball game. 
Due up in the bottom of the third, it'll be eight, nine, and one for Windsor. Anthony Dufour, Jeremy Orton, and then back to the top of the order for Noah Renaud. As we check on Twitter, we see Angela Schreider sending us a couple of messages. And Baldo says, go Windsor, cheering on Kimani Bailey and the stars from Amherstburg. And she says, thank you for streaming, and I say you're welcome, and thank you for joining us. Jordan Battersby says, cheering on Mitch Hudvagner and the Windsor Stars from Cottam, Ontario. And it looks like you got the nice deck party going on out there as well to watch the game. And then Ken Faulkner says, go Stars, watching from Calgary. As another one has us set up on their big screen. And Reggie Zimmerman for the Windsor Stars checking in with Kyla and a pretty puppy dog wearing a star's hat there. So thanks everybody for tuning in. We do appreciate having you along for the ride. Also got Shane Bond calling or watching on Facebook saying, saying, hey, I'm watching the game from here in Sydney. Glad to see you're still doing your thing. I remember you from the Albion games when my son, son Zach played for them a few years ago. Yeah, that was a couple of years ago that Zach Bond played with the Albions and I'm glad to be able to continue doing this. Alicia, Alicia Quick says, go Dartmouth, go. So we got plenty of fans of both teams watching. First pitch swinging and sending a high fly ball out to Turple was Dufour. And Turple able to make the catch for the first out. Dufour coming into that at bat was hitting 462. Six for 13 including a home run, three RBIs, and two runs scored. Brings up Jeremy Orton. Orton, six for 11. Leads the team in batting average at 545. Yes, that's right, six for 11, plus two walks. So an on-base percentage over 600. And he's also scored five runs. Takes a strike there. But Jeremy Orton has been a big producer at the bottom of the order for the Windsor Stars here this weekend, helping to turn the order over. But right now he's behind in the count 0-2. As we play here in the bottom of the third inning, second meeting of the weekend between the Dartmouth Mooseheads and the Windsor Stars. That pitch just misses and the count goes to one and two. But this is not a double knockout event or anything like that. This is a, that first meeting was a pool play game. This is the championship game. So what happened back on Friday afternoon has no real bearing on the outcome of this one. The count now to Orton is two and two after Schreider was ahead 0 and two in the count. That one cued off the end of the bat, knocked down by McKinley. He'll get up, get the throw to Doucette. In time for the second out of the inning. Bottom of the third, and we're at two outs now. There we go. And we go back to the top of the order for Noah Renault. He struck out looking his first time up. So Renault 0 for 1 this evening. And here comes the first pitch from Schreider. Renault grounds it to Thibodeau. Thibodeau up, throws, and gets it over to Doucette in time for the third out. So no runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We played three complete, and this is a pitcher's duel. 0-0 zero, zero after three full innings. We'll head to the top of the fourth, due up for Dartmouth, it'll be Five, six, and seven, Turple, Trider, and Fader to try and break the goose eggs here in this game. As we got a message from Diane Breton saying, go Cody Schreider. Well, Schreider has certainly been pitching well. And again, we'll give you those addresses to send us messages at PetterPC underscore sports on Twitter or Facebook.com slash PetterSports. And again, this is 
Petter Sports and Streaming Services. And if you're interested in bringing us in to help broadcast your event, you can reach us through those same Twitter or Facebook feeds. And we do work with AOTV, and I have to again give a big shout out to Chava Demokos, who is the main man behind all of AOTV, and as, as well as giving a huge, huge shout out to Dixon Cho and Jeff Porter, who have been uh, my primary contacts and producers this weekend. They've done a great job. They've been doing the switching of the camera angles. They've been doing a lot of help on the technical end. And I have to give one final shout out uh, again to my wife Karen who stepped in when all of my other regular camera people uh, were not available. Karen is a grade 7 and 8 teacher by profession and she is uh, stepping in and doing a, a valiant job for her first time covering a baseball tournament on a camera. Really appreciate all of her help and and I'm not just saying that because she's my wife, but that's certainly showing appreciation for the work that your wife does goes a long way. Grounder down to Wazalik at short. He'll get the throw across the diamond in time. And it's one pitch, one up, one down here in the top of the fourth inning as Turple grounds out. That'll bring up Jalen Trider. He grounded out his first time up as well. So he's 0 for 1. We've had a little bit of everything this weekend. We've had one walk-off victory for a team. We've had two games go into extra innings. That one high into center field. And getting over to make the catch is Orton. So quickly, two up, two down. Two pitches, two outs. That'll bring up Jack Fader. He struck out the fir his first time up. And this inning so far, doing a big uh, help to the pitch count of Kimani Bailey as can he get out of this inning in three pitches? No, Fader will take ball one instead. That would have been something if it had been a three pitch inning. But he's got to work at least a little bit more. Takes another one just low and the count now two and oh. Two outs, there we go. Bailey gets set for the 2-0 pitch. Here comes the delivery, and that one will miss a bit high, 3-0 now. So Fader, as we mentioned, his first time up, still looking for his first hit of the tournament, has a 3-0 count here, and takes for a 3-1. Bailey delivers the 3 1, and that one's up the middle. Getting to it is Wasiluk. He'll get it over in time for the third out. So, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We played three and a half. We're halfway through and still waiting for the first run of this ball game. Do up in the bottom of the fourth for the Stars, it'll be Lumley, Wasiluk, and Robinson. Two, three, and four as they look to solve Schreider and the Dartmouth defense. As Mrs. Persa, the KPPZ kindergarten team, saying, Let's go, stars. We're here cheering you on from Tecumseh and mentioning particularly Jacob Persa, who started this game on the bench. Jake Goldman says, pitcher Zach Zim Jack Zimmerman and Huddy Hud Wagner, Van 
Wagner, formerly played together at Madonna University in Michigan. Wow. There we go. So those two back together as teammates. Zimmerman also not in this game right now, but depending on how things go, we may see him come out of the bullpen in relief. And shout out to Stephen Adam on the Windsor Stars. Go Steve from Tecumseh, Ontario, says Angela Adam Rager. So seems like a few more Windsor Stars fans than Dartmouth Mooseheads fans on the Twitter and the Facebook feeds, but Dartmouth is getting its representation as we get ready for the bottom of the fourth in inning. Jake Lumley will lead things off. He's one of the four strikeout victims so far in this game. And takes the first pitch strike 0 and 1. Jessica Camarada, I hope if I hope I pronounced that right, says just want to give a shout out to the Dufour brothers on the Windsor Stars team from Windsor, Ontario. Thank you, Jessica. Bouncing ball over to the first baseman, Doucette, who flips it to Schreider for the first out of the inning. bottom of the fourth now and there's one out there we go in the event that there is a discrepancy between the scoreboard that you see on your screen and that which we know to be true don't worry I will get caught up <laughs> brings up Andrew Wasilek he's 0 for 1 he grounded back to Schreider his first time up that one fouled off and the count 0 and 1 what a crowd we've got here tonight in Sydney. Not a spot to be found on the bleachers. Lots of people standing around as well. Great atmosphere for ball we've had all weekend long here in the Cape Breton Regional Municipality. Wasilek swings through and now the count 0-2. Known across the country as Sydney, Nova Scotia, but here within Nova Scotia, we know it as the CBRM. Sydney still is the major community within the municipality. That one high into the air and foul. So the count remains 0-2. Wasilek. The shortstop for the Stars. He's had a great weekend defensively as well as a very good weekend offensively. And he's going to add to those numbers with a single out into right field, dropping in. So that will put a runner on first with one away and bring up Colin Robinson. Robinson singled in the second and then was retired on a fielder's choice. Robinson, as, as we mentioned, had a big home run earlier this weekend. Throw over and Wasilek able to get back. As Schreider right-hander delivers to the plate this time runner going bouncing ball right back to Schreider he'll get the only play he can at first base as the runner was going so that'll make it two away but the runner will advance to second on the hit and run that'll bring up Mitch Hudwagner who Grounded into a force, that force out that retired Robinson back in the second. Comes up here with two out and a runner on second base. And as we're now in the bottom half of the fourth inning, we're in the second half of this game. Every scoring opportunity, every 
play starts to loom a little bit larger and a little bit more significant. Schreider gets the sign he wants and delivers. And a pitch right down the plate. Hot Vang Wagner lets it go by and the count goes to one and one. Swing and a miss. And it's now one and two on the third baseman for the Windsor Stars. One ball, two strikes. Schreider, through six and two thirds innings on Thursday, has thrown three and two thirds so far tonight. Gets Hud Wagner to foul that one back. And the count remains one and two. So that's 11 and one third innings that he has thrown so far and given up just one run on just four hits. Another one fouled straight back. And the amazing thing that Schreider has done all of this while in games that he is not pitching in, and for, the, for tonight he's actually hitting and pitching in the same game, he's hitting 267 and he scored four runs. So not only has he been a great pitcher for the Mooseheads, he's also done his job at the plate and on the base paths as well. And I know I don't get a vote, but if I did get a vote for a most valuable player of the tournament, he'd have to get some, some consideration. Popped out into shallow right field, going back and getting the ball as said, and he makes the catch for the third out. So. Whoop. I hope if I put it on the right right person on my score sheet. So in the top of, or bottom of the fourth, no runs on one hit, no errors. One runner was left on base. We'll head to the fifth as we remain Dartmouth zero and Windsor zero. The two key stats right now though, Dartmouth four, Windsor two. That's how many runners each of these teams has left on base. And again, as we were talking about, the longer this game goes, the more significant any missed opportunity might become. Oh my goodness, that's a sweet. As Ray Zimmerman says, Hudvanger, Zimmerman, Renault, Orton, and Deneau all went to Madonna University in Michigan. So there we go. And then we've got a pic picture of Kevin May from, or not a picture, but a, a tweet from Kevin Mayu fan club, Boo Stars, go Horvath, bleed purple. Uh, Horvath uh, did have a great outing when he pitched earlier in this tournament, uh, but uh, not pitching tonight. And then Meg Ford sends a picture of a cute little one up past her bedtime to cheer on Uncle Andrew. Oh, as you can see the little sweetheart there watching with the game on on the big TV there. I really, and oh, now we have Trisha Malosh Stevenson saying, wishing Jacob Persa and the rest of the Windsor, Windsor Stars good luck from the Stevenson family watching from Kingsville, Ontario. So again, appreciate all of you tuning in wherever you're joining us from. We're hearing from a lot of Stars fans, Dartmouth fans, I think most of them are here in the facility as a lot have come up from Dartmouth for the games this weekend. And speaking of the Dartmouth Mooseheads, it's their turn to bat here in the fifth inning and Dan Como will lead things off against Kimani Bailey. Como struck out his first time up, one of four strikeout victims so far on the evening. As Bailey Going into his senior season at Grambling State, gets ready to deliver his first pitch. And that one will be fouled out over the fence off the foul, side, foul area in right field. 
So Como behind in the count here, 0 and 1. The 0 1 pitch swung on and missed as I think Como was fooled on that one, ended up being out in front of it a little bit. Not expecting the break that he saw in that pitch. Bailey pulling the string a little bit. Now here comes the 0-2. That one chopped just in front of the third baseman. And Hud Vag Wagner, Hud Wagner ends up throwing that one wide. And I believe we're going to see an E5 scored on that one. We'll wait for the official scorer to tell us for sure. But that'll bring up Billy Hartley. And no, they do credit Como with a single there. So the slow roller, Hud Wagner not charged with an error on the play and Billy Hartley comes up to bat with one on, nobody out here in the top of the fifth. Hartley squares around to bunt and offers at it, but not able to make contact, so the count 0-1. And, and again, with this being a 0-0 game now into the fifth inning, if you can get a runner into scoring position, obviously that is vitally important. So Hartley being asked to get this bunt down. Not squaring around this time. Takes a pitch on the inside corner. It's now 0-2, so that will take the bunt off the table completely. As Bailey gets himself set, takes a look over at Como. Now delivers high and outside, one and two. When Bailey throws with the full windup, he's got a lot of elasticity in that body that gives him a lot of extra whip. He doesn't get quite as much throwing from the stretch, but he still gets quite a bit. Grounder to do four. Do four will get it to Wasilek for one. Over to first, not in time. As Hartley able to hustle out and avoid the double play. Como is retired at second, so there's now one out, but still a runner on first. And we're back around to the top of the order for Cody Schreider. He walked in the first and struck out in the fourth, or in the third, excuse me. So Schreider now has a chance to help out his own cause as the pitcher of record. You mentioned Schreider got tagged with that loss in the opening game, so his record is 0-1. Throw over to first, and Como able to get back underneath the tag of Robinson. Bailey. Delivers a curve ball in for a strike, and 0-1 on Schreider. The 0-1, and Bailey gets a piece of that, but ends up pulling it foul. Or Schreider, excuse me, gets a piece of that, ends up pulling it foul, and the count goes to 0-2. And, and Hartley has to head back over to first base. Ty set or sorry, Chris Thibodeau, the shortstop in the on-deck circle for the Mooseheads. Set waiting in the wings as well. That pitch misses outside, and the count goes one and two. Hey, you know where you want to hear four three. Let's see it. Square it up, kid. Square it up. Go, Cody. Come on, Bailey. Goes to the rosin bag. Now he'll step up and get himself ready. 
keeping a close eye on Como. And he gets Strider swinging at a pitch that was inside off the plate. Schreider looking a little awkward on that swing. And that'll be the fifth strikeout of the game for Bailey. That'll bring us to two out and Chris Thibodeau comes to the plate. He singled in the third, struck out in the first. So one for two on the evening. He ended up being retired trying to get from first to third on Doucette's single. And takes the first pitch strike on the outside corner, 0-1. As we talked about, Dartmouth has left four runners on base, including leaving the bases loaded back in the first. Windsor have only left two runners on. There's a throw over and Hartley able to get back in. So the question being, is this going to be another story of missed opportunities like it was for Dartmouth in their game against Elmira where they, or uh, Elmwood, excuse me, where they had bases, they had runners on third base three times in the first four innings and did not score on any of those and ended up losing the game one nothing. Are we in line to see something similar happen tonight? I think the fact that we're going to see a game where one or two runs is all you're going to need to get the win. But the question is, how are you going to get those one or two runs when both of these pitchers are doing so well? Of course, as I say that, Bailey ends up putting a ball into the dirt that gets past Deneau, and that allows Hartley to get down to second, putting a runner in scoring position. If Thibodeau can take advantage. They've had, let's see, they've gone 0 for 1, 0 for 2. They're 0 for 2 with runners in scoring position so far tonight. Windsor, on the other hand, are also 0 for 2 with a runner in scoring position, but they've only had one runner reach second base. Dartmouth had runners on all three of the bases at once in that first inning. Thibodeau fouls that one off. The count now two and two. Oops, I got the inning. Long. There we go. We're in the top of the fifth, not the bottom of the fourth. Like I said before, if there's a discrepancy with what you know to be correct and what I've got on the scoreboard, I will catch up eventually. That one misses high and the count goes full three and two. The big difference between watching a game here and watching a game on one of those big networks is they've got about 80 or 90 people who are working on the broadcast in a bunch of different forms. We've got four. <laughs> so we do appreciate your patience when I can't keep up on the scoreboard or stuff like that. That one pulled foul down the third base side and the count's going to remain three and two. Thibodeau had a, an eight or nine pitch at bat earlier in the game. About to see his eighth pitch of this at bat. And he also had a five pitch at bat in the first inning when he struck out. So this now the 22nd pitch that Thibodeau has seen from Bailey. I don't think Kamani Bailey has much left in the way of something that will surprise Thibodeau. The question now is, can Thibodeau take that knowledge and convert it? Or can Bailey find some way to fool him? But he won't as he'll miss just upstairs. And that'll put runners at first and second with the walk. 
and bring up Ty Doucette. Doucette is two for two with a pair of singles. And with two outs and runners will be go would be going on contact, you figure if Doucette gets another single here, that would lead to the first run of the game with Billy Hartley with some speed at second base. And again, with two out, he'd be going on contact. So Bailey is going to need to be careful here. And he gets a first pitch strike called on Doucette as that catches the outside corner. Bailey with a look back at Hartley at second base. Gets to set to swing and miss at that pitch and now the count 0-2. If you're scoring along at home, circle this at bat as a key moment in this game, one way or the other. This will be a key moment in this game. Will it work in Dartmouth's favor or in Windsor's? It ends up hitting Doucette, and that will load the bases. Thibodeau moves up to second. Hartley gets to third. And with the bases loaded, here comes Anthony McKinley. He's 0 for 2 tonight. Flew out to center and flew out to right, but McKinley with three RBI already in this tournament and a home run already. And the Stars are going to talk this over. Coach coming out to have a word with Kamani Bailey, making sure he knows making sure they all know what the plan is. So the hit by pitch may be not the key moment, but this at bat now. Bases loaded, two away, top of the fifth inning, Anthony McKinley up to bat. Circle this one as a big moment in this game. And perhaps you even could still leave the tie do set hit by pitch circled as key because if he doesn't get hit, the bases don't get loaded. But this at bat, this plate appearance right here. And we're going to get time called. Not sure who requested it, but whomever it was. Had it granted, now we'll reset again. McKinley stepping in with the bases loaded and two away. These are the moments you live for as a batter. You want to be the man in there taking the cuts. McKinley gets a good cut there, but doesn't make contact in the count 0-1-1. If you're a pitcher, these are the moments you fantasize about when you're playing as a kid being the pitcher in a key moment of a national championship game. That pitch just misses inside, one and one. The Dartmouth Mooseheads, the Windsor Stars, both of these teams coming in about as hot as you can be. Windsor four straight wins through the tournament. Dartmouth three in a row after starting 0-2 to get themselves here. But it's been the Bailey and the Schrider show so far. That pitch misses inside, 2-1. and one. Nowhere to put McKinley. If he gets walked, a run comes in. Bailey sets for the 2-1. Swing and a miss, strike two. Or actually, that might have been a foul tip. The way the umpire threw his hands up there, there may have been, there must have been contact with the ball. So now, two balls, two strikes, two outs. 
Bases loaded. Tie ball game. Here comes the 2-2 pitch. Chopped back to Bailey. He'll get it, throw it over to first in time. And Dartmouth, for the second time in this game, leaves the bases loaded. No runs on one hit, no errors. Three runners left on base for the second time this game. And we will go to the bottom of the fifth, still tied at zero. Due up in the bottom of the fifth. It will be seven, eight, and nine. Stephen Adam, Anthony Dufour, and Jeremy Orton for the Windsor Stars. We've got Renee Royal saying, cheering on Dartmouth tonight. Let's go, Mooseheads. Angela Adam Rager says, Stephen Adam was drafted out of high school by the Milwaukee Brewers. I did not know that but pursued school in Salt Lake City and Maine instead. Interesting. I knew there were a couple of other players here who had been drafted. Jake Lumley of the uh, Stars, one of them. One of the members of the Edmonton Cubs had also been drafted back in 2011. But Stephen Adam also drafted by Milwaukee, but chose to go to school instead. That's interesting. And Glenda Kerr says, to the moon, Anthony McKinley. Go Dartmouth. And watching from all the way over in BC. Thank you so much, Glenda. And let's see. We've got Varsha saying, champagne of beers for the champagne, champagne of players. Andrew Wasiluk watching from London. Uh, and Baldo says, Windsor and area is the best. That's why they have great fans. Players from Windsor, LaSalle, Amherstburg, and to, to come see, excuse me. And uh, Anne, you are once again very welcome. As the leadoff hitter, uh, Stephen, actually, no, it's a, uh, the leadoff hitter, Matt Deneau, excuse me, with the single. So it's Deneau, Adam, and Dufour who are due up. So that'll now bring up Steven Adam. So Deneau, who was 0 for 1, singles to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Bringing up Steven Adam, who struck out his first time up. Schreider out there for his fifth inning of work. Adam shows bunt, pulls the bat back, and the ball ends up hitting the catcher Dan Como and bouncing away. So that allows Deneau to get over to second. And mission accomplished to move a runner into scoring position and they didn't need the bunt to do it. The count goes to one and oh on Adam. As Schreider gets charged with a wild pitch on that one. The bunt is laid down. They're going to throw to third and try to get the out there, and they do as Schreider able to get the tag down. What a play by Schreider to get the ball to Schreider and get the tag down on Deneau. So fielder's choice, 1-5 on the putout, and that is a big moment in this game. That'll bring up Anthony Dufour. He's 0 for 1. Flew out to center his first time up. <laughs> wow. We are seeing some great baseball here tonight. We've seen fantastic ball all weekend, but this is incredible. What a play by Schreider getting off the mound and getting to that ball. What a play by Trider, T-R-I-D-E-R, to make the tag. Runner going, swing and a miss. And in safely with the slide is Steven Adam. It may have been a hit and run the way Dufour swung at that pitch. Looked like it was a hit and run, not a straight steal. But Steven still able to get in with the steal. 
And the 0-1 count on the Windsor second baseman. And a called strike there on the breaking pitch and the count now 0-2. So the Stars now 0 for 3 with runners in scoring position. That one chopped to third. It gets through as Trider not able to knock it down. And the throw over to first. Dufour able to get back. And so we'll have runners at the corners now with one out and that'll bring up Jeremy Orton he grounded out his first time up and this another key moment in this ball game with runners on the corners and one away Corner infielders in to cut down a run at the plate. Middle infielders at double play depth. And now Dartmouth is going to call time. As they want to make sure they've got their signals together. Now the middle infielders also come in to cut down the run at home plate. So the infield in throw over to first. And Dufour able to get back in. Steven Adam standing at first or at third base. Anthony Dufour standing at first. Schreider throws over to first again and the ball's gonna get away from Doucette. Adam coming in, he will score. And the Stars go ahead, one nothing. Here in the bottom of the fifth inning. On the throwing error by Schreider. I believe they're gonna call it a throwing error. So now just a runner on first. Runner going. Bunt popped into foul territory, diving to get to it, but not able to get there was Como. And Dufour went into second base awkwardly. I wasn't watching him, but I see him slow to get up there. Didn't see exactly what happened with him. Not sure about that. And that's the last thing you want to see is somebody getting injured in what has been such a fantastic ball game, a well-played game by both teams. And Dufour looks like he's going to come out of the game. Tough break for Anthony Dufour. And see who they bring in as a pinch runner for him. And he's walking off under his own power. That's certainly good news, but now we're going to have the coach come and Give the umpire the lineup change, and it looks like it's going to be Jacob Persa coming in to pinch run. He will likely stay in the game at second base. Persa has appeared in one other game. He came in as a pinch runner in that one as well. Ended up coming around to score when he came in as a pinch runner in that game. So this is his second appearance 
of the tournament. Stands at first with one away. And his team now ahead by a run. And throw over. Bursa able to get back. As Schreider is ahead in the count on Orton, 0-1. Another throw over to first, and Persa again able to get in under the tag of Doucet as Schreider quite focused on what's going on over there at first base. Now he'll send a ball home. Called strike, Persa able to beat the throw down. So 0 and 2 the count on Orton, but another runner in scoring position now as Persa with the steal. Persa with a big lead off second there. Schreider will deliver, swing and a miss. And that will be the second out of the inning as Orton goes down swinging. The fifth strikeout of the day by Schreider, and that'll bring us back around to the top of the order. And Noah Renault, he's 0 for 2. He is one of those five strikeout victims this evening. First pitch swinging out to center field, almost directly at Colby Turple. Turple just had to take a few steps backwards. Didn't have to move at all left or right, but the Windsor Stars do get one run on one hit. There was one error and one runner left on base. Through five complete. We finally have a team out in front. It is the Windsor Stars. One nothing going into inning number six. Due up in the top of the sixth for Dartmouth. It'll be Colby Turple, Jalen Trider, and Jack Fader. As we And it sounds like Persa's coming out of the game after pinch running. And it's going to be Brian Dufour going in to play second base, if I heard that correctly. So Brian Dufour will take over at second for his brother, Anthony Dufour. see any other changes for Windsor on the screen here. Just waiting because it usually takes them a minute or so to get them in. Yes, it is Brian Dufour. Oh, they also make a pitching change. Jack Zimmerman coming in to pitch. So Zimmerman making his second appearance of the tournament. He pitched a complete game uh, earlier this tournament. He's got a record of 1-0. Gave up six hits on three runs, two of them earned. Six hits, he also hit one batter, no walks, struck out six in that victory. And that would have been, if he gave up three runs, that would have been the game against Dartmouth. There's a ground out as Turple goes down, so one away. 
No, that would have been the game against Alberta. Okay. So Zimmerman pitched the game against the Edmonton Cubs, giving up three runs, two of them earned. So this Zimmerman's second appearance of the tournament, as mentioned. Kimani Bailey does stand to be the pitcher of record as Windsor did score a run in the bottom of the fifth inning before the pitching change came into effect. Here's Trider now. He was, he's 0 for 2, fouls that one back and he's behind in the count 0 and 2. Grounded out in the first, flew out to center in the fourth. Trider behind in the count now, 0 and 2. Top of the sixth inning. Swing and a miss. And that's the first strikeout of the game for Zimmerman after coming in in relief. And again, he struck out six in that first appearance. So that's his seventh strikeout of the weekend. Brings up Jack Fader. He's 0 for 2. Struck out and grounded out. Takes the first pitch strike and it's 0 and 1. That one fouled back into the night sky and behind our broadcast position here. Just behind home plate at the beautiful Susan McEachern Memorial Ball Field. The artificial turf infield, the natural grass outfield and foul territories. Another one fouled back. It remains 0-2. And, and one thing that we've seen regularly over these three days, anytime there's not games going on, well, not any time, but after the games, they let the kids out and run the base paths, and the little ones have just a blast running the base paths on that beautiful surface out there. One and two the count as Zimmerman asks for a different ball. Fader stepping back in. Here comes the one-two pitch. Knocked off the glove of Zimmerman, it gets to Brian Dufour over to Robinson in time for the third out. So three up, three down. No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. We'll go to the bottom of six as Windsor looks to put up some insurance. And it'll be two, three, and four. Lumley, Wazaluk, and Robinson do up for the Windsor Stars. Schreider back out there for his sixth inning of work. And as it stands right now, if this game scoreline does not change, and the Windsor Stars win, the guy you gotta kinda shake your head for is Cody Schreider. So far, he has pitched 11 and two-thirds innings. He has given up two runs in 11 and two-thirds innings and could stand to go 0-2 if this score holds the way it is. You can't ask Schreider to have done much more than he already has. But he has the potential of going to 0-2 by giving up two runs in so far 11 and two-thirds innings. He still has a, at least, well, depending on how long he stays out there, he has potentially two more innings to go. Jake Lumley leads things off. He's 0 for 2, struck out in the first, grounded out in the fourth. And the first pitch from Schreider. 
Breaking ball in the zone for an 0-1 count. The left-handed hitting DH. He's also played a little bit of second base for the Stars this weekend. Takes that one inside, ball one. One and one the count. Schreider sets for the 1-1 one, one pitch. That'll miss outside, 2-1. and one. That one high up in the air, foul territory. Will it stay in play? No, it won't. Nearly hits our first base camera. Ends up landing just a little ways behind it. Jake, if you hit my, if you hit one of our cameras, we'll have to have a little chat after the game. We'll send you the bill. Don't worry, Dixon, I'll make sure your cameras stay safe. Not that I can protect it from a foul ball in here. I just can go and get revenge as a result. There's a swing and a miss by Lumley. And that'll be the sixth strikeout by Schreider tonight. That'll bring up Andrew Wasiluk. Wasiluk is one for two with a single and a ground out. Looking ahead to the top of the seventh inning, if Dartmouth needs just one run, it'll be Como, Hartley, and Schreider due up for it. If they need more than one run, that's still who's due up. But first pitch to Wasiluk. And that one was called a ball. Second one fouled back, and the count goes to one and one. Got to wonder about bats on the bench as well in case Dartmouth wants to throw out a pinch hitter. There's a few bats available there. Let's go, Cody! Including Ritzy. Perhaps Hubley. A couple of options there. Another one fouled off, and the count remains one and two. As Wasilek having trouble catching up to Schreider's fastballs here in this at bat, it seems. Bottom of the sixth inning of the championship game here at the 2022 Baseball Canada Men's Championship Tournament. Windsor Stars one, Dartmouth Moosehead zero. One away, bottom of six. Wasilek with a one-two count. He's fouled off a couple pitches to stay alive. Now that one misses inside and the count goes to two and two. Colin Robinson in the on-deck circle waiting to hit next. If either one of them gets on, then it'll be Mitch Hudwagner. That one's fouled off again. And we're now going into the eighth pitch of this at bat for Wasiluk. Schreider nods, sets and delivers. That one. Swing and a miss, but the ball gets all the way to the backstop. And the throw down to first, not in time. So Wasiluk will reach on the strikeout and the pass ball. Seventh strikeout of the game for Schreider. That surpasses his total that he had in the six and two thirds innings he pitched against Elmwood. That'll bring up Colin Robinson. He's one for two with a single and a ground out. 
Wasilek will step back to first as Schreider looks him back. Now Schreider sets and delivers. Pitch misses high and outside. Looked like it was sort of a half pitch out as Como was up out of his crouch. Ready if Wasilek was going, but Wasilek staying put on the first pitch. And we'll see him dive back in as Schreider makes the move to first. A 1-0 game right now. Another throw over to first, and again Wasilek gets back to the bag. This potential insurance run in the form of Wasilek, incredibly important. That one misses high. 2-0 and the count on Robinson. Dartmouth has lost one game, one to nothing in this tournament already. Trying to at least keep it one nothing for now until they get to the top of the seventh so they can try and tie it up. But right now the count three and zero oh on Robinson. And you know Robinson's got the power that if he's given a green light and he gets a pitch he likes, he can turn on it and send it launching out of this ballpark. He doesn't get that chance though as ball four. So Wasilek will get to second and Robinson to first and that'll bring up Mitch Hutwagner who is 0 for 2. Hutwagner 0 for 2 on the day. Here comes the pitch. And that one misses. And we're gonna get a brief timeout as Doucette comes over to settle down his pitcher. Words of encouragement for Cody Schreider who has thrown five and a third innings tonight. He threw six and two thirds back on Thursday, so now 12 innings. There's a strike in the count one and one. 12 innings coming out of this arm so far this weekend. He's still got a little ways to go yet. That one misses low in the count two and one. Schreider gets himself set and delivers. That one sent out into left field. It'll drop in for a base hit. Wasilek rounds third, heads for home. He'll get in safely. And it's now 2 nothing for Windsor. A big RBI single for Hud Wagner. Doubles up the lead for Windsor. And it's still runners at first and second with one out and brings up Matt Deneau. Deneau one for two with a single. And we're going to see a visit to the mound here. And there is action in the Dartmouth bullpen. So we'll Wait and see if they're going to make the move now or are they going to let Schreider try and work his way out of this sixth inning. 
Looks like Schreider will keep going. It's a left-hander warming up in the pen. Can't quite see the number, but I can tell you it is a left-hander warming up in the bullpen. As we tried to get a shot there, I didn't quite catch it fast enough. Here's Deneau stepping in. That one misses low, ball one. <laughs> Robinson at second, Hud Wagner at first. Windsor has added an insurance run here in the bottom of the sixth, looking to add even more. That pitch misses high, ball two, two and oh. And as we head to the, as we look ahead to the top of the seventh, it will be eight, nine, and one. Como, Hartley, and Schreider do up. Swing and a miss. And the count goes to two and one. Although, of course, if Schreider gets taken out for a relief pitcher, then Schreider's spot in the Batting order would have to go to a pinch hitter. <laughs> Grounder down to third. Picked up there by Trider across the diamond, but Doucette not able to pick that ball out. So that will load the bases. Doucette has been so sure-handed all weekend long. And we'll wait and see if they call that a throwing error on Trider. It, the ball was down in the dirt. It will definitely be an error. The uh, error is charged to Trider there, so the bases do get loaded. One away, and Steven Adam will come up. And that will be the night for Schreider. What a yeoman's effort from Schreider. And he's actually going to stay in the game. He's going to go out into the outfield. So it's going to be Schreider going into left, I believe. And the pitcher who's coming in is Braden McKinnon. I'll give you McKinnon's numbers here on the tournament so far. He pitched, he made one previous appearance, pitching two innings of relief, gave up two hits, one run, it was earned, struck out two. So overall an ERA of 4.5 and a whip of 1.0 as the left-hander warms up. And Schreider taking over for McKinnon. Or McKinnon taking over for Schreider. Schreider goes into the outfield. But I didn't see which outfielder came in. So where McKinnon goes in the batting order. We'll figure that out in the top of the seventh. So the first batter that McKinnon faces will be Steven Adam. Adam is 0 for 2 reached on a fielder's choice and came around to score the run back in the fifth inning. Now bats here in the sixth with the bases loaded and one out. Infield all the way around is in to try and cut down the run at home. And first pitch strike to Adam.
swing and a miss. And the count goes to 0-2. On the left-handed hitting left fielder for the Windsor Stars. McKinnon trying to stop the bleeding here, trying to hold it to just a two-run deficit for his team going into the top of the seventh. That pitch just misses outside, and the count now one and two. One ball, two strikes, bases loaded, bottom of six. The delivery just misses again outside, and it's now two and two. McKinnon trying to find that outside corner or trying to see if he can get Adam to chase. Neither has happened on these last two pitches yet, but it has been very close. The lefty gets set and fires. And that one misses low, three and two. Now, full count, but only one out. Do you send the runners to try and... I'd say probably not, just in case it's a strikeout. You don't want to send Robinson towards home. Not because it's Robinson, you just don't want to send a runner right towards the catcher. That one fouled back and the count goes to, or count remains three and two. The runners were not going with the pitch on that last one. If it was maybe only runners on first and second, you might think about sending them with only one out, but. And the looping curveball does not catch the inside corner. And the walk leads to another run. Windsor now ahead, 3-0. And the base is still loaded. Adam gets credit for an RBI with that walk pushing in a run. And that'll bring up Brian Dufour. His first at bat of this game, his just his second plate appearance in the tournament. He is 0-for-1. And the first pitch to Brian Dufour is a ball as McKinnon had strikes on the first two pitches and then has been just outside the zone nibbling at corners. Dufour fouls that one back so the count now one and one. That one misses inside, and it's two and one. Hud Wagner now on third, Deneau at second, Steven Adam is standing at first. 3-1 now the lead for Windsor. As they try to add even more insurance ahead of the top of the seventh. Swing and a miss there. And so the count now two and two. I don't think McKinnon was sure that Como had it the way he came breaking for home there. But Como was like, no, I got the ball, don't worry. Two and two, the count. Again, this just Dufour's second plate appearance of the tournament. Takes there and the count goes to three and two. Another walk would lead to another run. So McKinnon's got to come at Dufour here. There's nowhere to put him. McKinnon delivers. Grounder to short. Throw home. They don't get the out at the, yes they do. Como bobbled the ball but was able to recover in time and get the force out at home. Thibodeau with the throw. Como made an adventure of it. 6-2 on the put out. Hud Wagner is retired, trying to score. 
So the base is still loaded, but now two out, and that brings up Jeremy Orton. Orton 0 for 2 on the game. Orton grounded out in the third, struck out in the fifth. He is now the eighth batter of this sixth inning. Two runs already in. That one fouled back into the screen in the count 0-1. No balls, one strike on the center fielder for the Windsor Stars. Shows bunt, gets the bunt down. Force play at the plate, they will get the out. So Orton trying to mix things up a bit. It's not, it doesn't end up working. But the Windsor Stars do get two more runs on no hits. There were no actual hits in that inning. There was one error, and the bases left loaded. Or there was one hit, excuse me. Two runs, one hit, one error, and the base is left loaded. We'll go to the seventh. Dartmouth needs three runs to force Windsor to have to bat again in the bottom of seven. They need four runs to carry a lead into the bottom of seven. And it's going to be eight, nine, and one due up. Como. Hartley and Schreider, as Schreider did stay in the game, he went out to play in the outfield. So it may not be Hartley either. It may, Hartley may have been the fielder who was taken out. I still, I didn't quite catch who it was who came out of the game. So we'll have to wait and see. Ken Falkner saying go stars, get well soon, doof. Watching from Calgary. As see the game set up out on the patio there. Let's see. As leading off, it is gonna be Dan Como. He's one for two tonight. Singled in the fifth, struck out back in the second. As Zimmerman out for his second inning of action, trying to get the two inning save. As he did come in with just a one run lead, so it is a save situation here for Zimmerman, trying to save a gold medal. And he gets a first pitch strike on Como. It is Hartley in the on deck circle, so he's not the player who came out of the game. I believe it was uh, Turple who came out. That pitch misses high and inside, one and one. So. Two and one now, the count on Como. The game tying run currently in the dugout, in the, in the hole. What a knockdown by Hud Wagner. He gets up, gets the ball across the diamond in time for an out. What a play by Hud Wagner. Diving to knock down that ball. Gets up quickly, gets the throw across the diamond. For the first out, that will bring up Billy. Actually, that'll bring up a pinch hitter, Cameron Ritzy. So it may, it, maybe it was Hartley who left. Ritzy, bouncer right in front of the plate, picked up 
by Deneau, and he gets it down to Robinson for the second out. So the Dartmouth Mooseheads are now down to their final out. And it's Corey or Cody Schreider. Schreider walked in the first, struck out in the third, struck out in the fifth, comes up as the last chance for his team. Needs to get on base to keep the inning and the game going. Swing and a miss, strike one. Windsor Stars, two strikes away from being named national champions. And time gets called as not quite sure what that was about there, but the coach for the Stars had come out, was coming out and talking to the Dartmouth coach there for a minute. Everything seemed to be good-natured fun. Not quite sure what it was, though. There's a grounder. Picked up by Zimmerman. Throw to first. In time. And Windsor is national champion. The Windsor Stars win the gold medal. And you see there joining them, hopping on one foot to get out and join the celebration, Anthony Dufour. Whatever that injury is, obviously we hope he gets well soon, but you gotta think it feels a little bit less painful right now at this moment. For the Dartmouth Mooseheads, what a phenomenal tournament they had. They played some fantastic ball all weekend long, coming up just short. It's one of those situations where you might not feel it right now, but afterwards, when you have some time to process it, to be able to say that you are national silver medalists is something well worth being proud of. We are gonna stick around for the presentation of the medals. You don't have to go anywhere just yet. Stick around for that. I'm going to stop talking for a while during the, the presentation. We will come back and do a uh, proper sign-off after... Uh, as a very happy bunch of Windsor Stars and the Dartmouth Mooseheads come out of their dugout and they salute their fans who have been so supportive of them all weekend. We're gonna get the handshakes and then we'll get to the presentation of the medals. And like I said, I will stop talking once we get to those handshakes and then I'll come back and do a proper sign off after they give the medal presentations and the championship banners and whatever else there is to present in the way of hardware. But before we get to that, while they do the handshakes, I just want to take another opportunity to thank the organizing committee for having us here this week. Uh, my wife Karen and I, Karen was working the camera for me, uh, had so much fun. The hospitality was incredibly uh, warm, and uh, we are so appreciative of that. To all of you, the fans who have been watching all week long, thank you as well. We really appreciate having you here with us. Like I've said many times, if we didn't have, if you guys weren't there watching, we wouldn't have a job to do, so I appreciate that. Once again, to Dixon Cho, and to Jeff Porter and all the, the work that you two have done making me sound good. Uh, I really do appreciate that. I wouldn't be able to do this job without you guys being there for all of the backup and support and running the back end. And now we're going to, I'm gonna take off my microphone and set it up so that you guys can hear it a little bit better outside the window.
States of all Canada, félicitations à l'équipe Winter Spurs et toutes les équipes pour un excellent tournoi. Thanks to the host committee and the volunteers for all the hard work and the dedication. Merci au comité organisateur et aux bénévoles pour tout leur travail et dévouement. Thanks to the city of Sydney and New Waterford. Thanks to the city and their gracious host. Thanks to the umpires, the officials for a job well done. Merci aux athlètes au ciel pour le travail bien fait. A big thank you to our sponsors, thank you to the Community National Rolling Home Run Sports Group is for Canada. Now we're going to proceed with the Baseball Canada uh, Awards for the Best Offensive Player and the Best Defensive Player.
and basically I had a dozen to 20 people just stepped up and made sure that what you saw this weekend and how great it moved and flowed and everything, they're responsible. It's not me, it's them, and I, I'm not going to mention them because I'm afraid I'm going to meet, meet, uh, miss one, uh, but to them and the support staff that that executive had because we probably had about 150, uh, 150 volunteers that stepped up. Um, one other thing that I think if anyone was watching the weather the last four days since Wednesday, it's been threatening to rain on. And uh, I met uh, Linda Morris from Chatham, New Brunswick, and she said, and they've done four national championships in Abdania, they do them well runs like silk. But she said with the best planning, the last week before the Nationals, what they do is they all get down on bended knee, say a prayer, and that prayer is that you get the weather that we ended up getting. And for four or five days, it looked like every day we could get rain. We danced without any. So uh, thank you to those people who offered the prayers and uh, made that happen. Uh, to, to my own team, the Sydney Sooners, uh, we had a great tournament. Uh, unfortunately, it wasn't successful with wins in the win column, but we had a, a, a successful tournament ourselves. But my players stepped up for me the last three or four weeks. They were part of that whole thing of getting, uh, getting things straight here. So thank you very much to them. And to the other field, to Jerry Marsh, I had Dougie McKinnon, and low corner coordinating uh, in the Waterford, and they did a fantastic job. So thank you very much to the crew in the Waterford. <laughs> Finally, to the two individual teams here, I got to watch this game pretty well in its totality. I just suggested to one of the members that I know very well on the Dartmouth team, you have two of the best amateur baseball teams in the country here who performed tonight and entertained all these fans that were here. So congratulations to you. It was just so enjoyable uh, to watch both teams play, and I thank you very much for that. And obviously, a personal Congratulations to our 2022 uh, Canadian men's baseball champions, the Windsor Stars. Just a strong team, strong team who beat a very strong team. I'm going to sum up. I meant to ask Jerry, is Red Deer hosting next year? Okay, it's planned. So I'm going to do as they do at the end of the Olympics, just to hand out. I wish Red Deer, if they are the host, all the best of luck, and I hope they have the entertainment that you guys provided. So thank you very much. Drive safe and all the teams get home safe. Okay. Thanks, guys. So that is going to wrap it up from the 2022 Baseball Canada Men's National Championships. Once again, congratulations to the Windsor Stars on being the 2022 champions. And I'll just echo what Jim said. Thanks so much to so many people. Baseball Canada, Jim's organizing committee, everybody else who was involved in making this tournament happen. You guys did a fantastic job. That's going to do it for us. And I want to again say on behalf of Dixon Cho, Jeff Porter, and my wonderful wife Karen who was working the camera, may your pitches hit the corners and may your liners clear the fence. Final score once again, the Windsor Stars win the 2022 Men's Championship with, by a score of 3-0 over the Dartmouth Mooseheads. Thanks so much for watching. Enjoy the rest of your weekend and we'll see you again real soon.